and be glad in it. Um, we're happy to be here this morning. We don't take the opportunity lightly to sit behind this microphone and just add value to your day. God is so good, man. Um, I often say, I probably say it every day. He doesn't have to do anything, but he decided to do everything. And for that, we are grateful. If there's a such thing as more than grateful, that's what we are because he's been so good to us. And we don't take it lightly. We got a great show planned for you today. A lot to talk about, a lot to cover. Um, I hope you had a fruitful, prosperous weekend. Just like this week is going to be for you. It's going to be fruitful. It's going to be prosperous. We've learned to name and claim our days, our weeks, because we got power in our tongue and we're going to use it. We're going to use our power to manifest what it is that we want. Um, I was as I was coming in this morning, I'm, I'm always, you know, I prepare shows and we have things to talk about, but I always want to make sure that when I'm speaking to God's people, that he leads and guides me in what to say. And I want to say something that's going to help somebody. And so that's why I seek him for what to say. And um, and so that's just a constant prayer. That's just, that's not like a right before I come on, God giving you what to say. This is all the time. Like it's constant communication. And in that communication, that's a part of the communication. So this morning, though, it just so happened on my way in, I got a revelation, right? So it's downtown Detroit, and it's early in the morning. So you hear noises like garbage trucks backing up or big trucks during deliveries backing up. And we know what that sound is, right? It's that beep, beep. Beep. The tone may be a little bit higher than that, but but we hear we hear that sound when we listen to Jonathan McReynolds' song "Moving On." And so I I thought about it. I was like, "Wow!" The revelation was so clear. It was like sometimes here's the revelation. Sometimes you can't move forward if you can't back up. Or here's another way to say: sometimes you can't. Sometimes you need to back up in order to move forward. Now, don't lose me here. Catch it because somebody may be saying, well, you can't go backwards. And and here 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 is my pushback. You you can't and you should not go backwards. But a better way to say it is you shouldn't turn around. See, when you turn around then you're defeating the purpose of moving forward. So let's let's think about it for a moment. T- let's take a vehicle. Let's take a car. Sometimes in order to move forward, you have to back up. Not turn around, but you have to back up. Let's say you're in a parking spot. And we're talking about cars, but we're applying this to life, though. You're in a car. And it's a car in front of you. It's a car behind you. You can't just whip that wheel and get out of that spot. What do you have to do? You got to back up in order to move forward. I heard, I remember an old preacher saying one time, uh, he was he was like the MC of a program. And he said he missed a part of the program. And he said, you know, well, I, they told me a car was no good without reverse. Because sometimes you have to back up in order to move forward. So let's let's make that applicable for our lives. If if I have to back up to move forward, backing up could just means that I need to revisit something. Or I need to fix something before I can move forward in a certain area of my life. I don't need to turn around and go be in it I, and go face it and be a part of it. But I, I just may need to back up a little bit. 
I may need to back up and ask for forgiveness. Or I may need to back up and address some things in myself as it relates to something before I can move forward. A car is no good without reverse. Let's apply that today. I don't, I don't know why I got where, but I don't know why the revelation came, but I believe it's relevant. Sometimes you have to back up in order to move forward. Not turn around, but back up. That could mean that you need to get out of a relationship. You could be in a relationship that you shouldn't be in. And, and backing up just means, oh, I can't, I can't mess with you. I got to back up. And when you back up, guess what? You're going to move forward. That's good. That's good. I'm clapping for that revelation because it was God inspired. Man, so yesterday, you know, th this new normal is crazy because usually for all of our lives, Mondays is like a lot of us that grew up in church, it's like a tired day for us because we was in church all day on Sundays, but then we had to still participate in the week as as if we wasn't in church all day on Sundays. Like, remember when you would go to school and all your friends that didn't go to church or they went to Catholic church? You would get that on the way <laughs> back home today. But those that didn't tear, you know, be in church three and four services on Sundays, they would come back to school on Monday ready, energized. We would be coming off of a night service and not feeling it. But isn't it something how the dynamic of that all has changed this year? Who would have thought, especially those that grow up that grew up in church? Not just those that grew up in church, because a lot of people that grew up in church said peace. But and I ain't mad at you, but I'm talking about those that actively served in church up until March 2020. These last months have been uh, sometimes a little strange because we don't have that church residue on Sunday, on Mondays. And um, but it's OK. See, there is a new normal. I I don't want to break anybody's heart here, but the, here's what it is. Church will never be what it was prior to March 2020. Am I saying we're 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 not going to have a good time and it's not going to be good to be in the house with our brothers and sisters? No, I'm not saying that at all, but it will never be what it was prior to 2020. And, and listen, let me tell you, it's not all bad. As a matter of fact, it's not bad at all. See, although this is a time of pandemic. A lot of different things have have been happening as it relates to our world. But there has been a purging of a lot of different stuff for a lot of different reasons. And, and some of y'all ain't going to like me here, but it's OK. You can email me at the Mike Brown Morning Show at Gmail dot com. Um, a lot of things that we were doing anyway wasn't beneficial to nobody and that's just across the board and let me show you how it wasn't beneficial to anybody because we're not doing it right now and do we still love jesus check yes we do um are we still called according to his will check yes we are do we still believe in the power of the holy ghost yes we do check so all of the extra, if we're not doing it now, obviously, obviously, somebody say obviously, it wasn't necessary. Now, what God is doing and what he has done, though, is show us what is necessary 
And more than that, what's effective? Now, that's a shout right there. We ought to thank them. You know, we lost what we had, but we got what we want. See, as an effective witness, as an evangelist, we always talk about how can we get people to know Jesus? Look what he's done. He's given us a medium. Well, he's been given it. He's, he gave it to us a long time ago, a medium to reach the world. But now we don't have a choice. We have to go to the information highway to reach the world. But look at it. He's given us creative ideas. He's given us ways um, to express creativity when we reach the world so that we can we can retain their attention we we can relate or they can relate to us and what's beautiful about it is because we're not traditionally in the house anymore people don't have to we you know, a lot of people use used to use the excuse of, of not coming to church because they don't have the appropriate dress or or I don't have this and I don't have that. And a lot of people in church. Not because they they wanted to, but because they were so programmed, they made people feel bad about not having that suit on or about not having that dress on. Well, guess what? That don't exist no more. At least not right now. But but where's the lesson in that? Y'all really not going to like me here. Leave people alone. Th there's the lesson in that. Because, but guess what? Right now, it don't matter. Do you see? You, you lost what you had. But you got, you really got more than what you wanted. Because now we can give people Jesus without all the extra. And guess what else? Everybody in America's church time ha at least has been cut in half. What's the benefit there, Michael? Okay, I'll tell you. The benefit there is now that's a little more time you can spend with your family. Ooh -wee. Why is that important? Well, that's important because that's your first ministry anyway. So if I can take an hour, and in some cases for some people, if I could take five hours out of my week and that I was committing to, to that and I got that time back, that's going to help heal somebody. That's going to help make somebody's family whole. So I'm just, you know, a lot, a lot of people are like just devastated because they can't go to church. You stop being devastated and you become the church. You are the church. The church is in you. Come on now. Let's, let's not do that. Now, I'm not saying that we don't miss it. But I'm also saying what you miss, we can't go back to that. Yeah, we're going to get back in the building eventually. But we have to go back changed. Hallelujah. We have to go back different. Don't don't say nothing to me about what I got on. Now, common sense is going to tell me not to come dressed a mess. Because the truth of the matter is most people don't go anywhere. Most people now because some people do go places dressed a mess. But most people don't go places dressed a mess. But even if they do, when they get there and see what you got on, they're going to be like, oh, okay, well, next time uh, I'll do this so that I won't do that. But don't you sweat somebody coming in there. I, maybe I don't want to wear a suit today. So what? Y'all hear what I'm saying? Leave people alone. Give them Jesus. Leave them alone. Give them Jesus. Leave them alone. I'm going to leave this alone, but I I said all of that 
to lead up to this. So I'm strolling through, or is it not stroll? It's scroll. I'm scrolling through social media. And I got to give a shout out to Tim Bowman Jr. and Spirit of Faith. Shout out, man, because they have taken this opportunity to be super duper creative. And, um, yeah, I believe they introducing somebody to Jesus that otherwise would have been maybe not paid attention. They do. OK, so I, I can't go all I spend too much time on it, but it, go go to Instagram and type in Tim Bowman Jr. And just look at his IGTV or or I'm sure you can go to Spirit of Faith um go to their Instagram or any of their social media and you'll be able to see what I'm talking about. Anyways, yesterday what we've what we've been accustomed to being our church day as as Pentecost, well as church people, as Christians in America, we've adopted Sunday as our church day. On church day. Yesterday, Sunday. Um Tim and them Tim and them, that's right. <laughs> but the 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 music ministry of Spirit of Faith, they did a church medley, like what we used to when we talk about church. And it was so refreshing to me because the presentation was stellar. The quality, the sound quality, the video quality was stellar. The instrumentation. And let me say this. If most of us find ourselves in a in a streaming situation. And most of us find ourselves and let's just be honest about it, pre-recording our services. If if when if when you're watching YouTube and it says premiering or even on Facebook and it says premiering, we all know that that service is not in real time. Everybody knows that. So let me help everybody, every church person in the world that's streaming and that's pre-recording their stream. That is a gift for you to give the world a world-class presentation in the name of Jesus. That means that that thing can be as close to flawless as possible because you have the benefit of it not being in real time. So we don't want to just put anything out in Jesus name. No, we want to represent him to the fullest. So I challenge anybody that's listening to me right now and you are a part of the production for your church. And it's not live. Do not let any mistakes go out because you have time to fix it. All right. That's a side note. Spirit of faith. Yesterday. They did a church medley and they had Kiara Sheard there. And. um, I'm pretty sure I don't know this. And. I'm going to say it. I mean, if anybody gets offended, I don't know why they would. But you can contact me. The Mike Brown Morning Show at gmail.com. I'm pretty sure that they did some overdubs and things of that nature. I'm almost 100 percent sure because. It's I mean, it's it's CD ready quality. Right. So long story short, it felt like church. <laughs> if if something can feel like church. All right. So I'm this we're going to rock out to this this morning. We're going to get a little Sunday morning feel on a Monday morning. Um, It's long, but it's good. It's a good 10 minutes. So enjoy this. Let this start your week off, man. It, I, I don't dance. I'm not a dancer or a shouter, but this made me want to put some put my feet on it. But here it is. Um, Everybody, this is Spirit of Faith music ministry uh, featuring Kier Sheard. Hey, it's the Mike Brown Morning Show. Don't go anywhere. Uh, listen, uh, gospel music is going to be all right. 
you know, people used to say they was worried about the future of gospel. Don't worry about it no more. It's, we all right. That was Rich Tobert Jr. With, with He's In Control. Man, that's a good song. I, I'm stuck a little bit. Yes, Rich Tobert Jr. Add that to your library. Okay, look. So, as we can see um, through the news media, and some of you may be seeing it personally in your lives or around you, the coronavirus is not going anywhere. It it has not gone anywhere, and it's not going anywhere anytime soon. So it brings up the question, and, and we all should ask ourselves this question. Why are we not as vigilant as we were in the beginning? As it relates to the coronavirus, March Michael, March, insert name here, should be as vigilant as October Michael or October, insert your name here. But for some reason, we've become a little bit laxed. And I mean, well, not for some reason. The reason is because people around us are lax. The the world, ha- well, our country in particular has become laxed. Uh, people that have sound solutions and have taken uh, sound measures are looked at as crazy. Like Governor Whitmore, for example. She ain't do nothing wrong. All she wanted to do is make sure people were safe and protected. But she's the eyeball out. Something's wrong with that picture. So I I got a clip I want to play, but I first I want to read a little bit of this Wall Street Journal article. Uh, it says COVID nineteen is surging at weddings, dinner parties, and group events. I'm gonna say that again. COVID nineteen is surging. At weddings, dinner parties, and group events, people, saints of the most high, I know we miss each other, and I know we want to go. But if it's going to be, if it's going to be too many untraceable people there, what do I mean by untraceable? I don't know where you've been and who you've been around. That means that I can't be around you. That's how serious it has to be in order to stop the spread. See, it's kind of like the main thing we have to do is stop the spread. Like even if the coronavirus stays around for years to come, if we stop the spread, then we've done our part. How do we stop the spread? Get away from each other. Always sanitize. Always. If anybody is around you, wear a mask. Always. Like if you're out, if you are outside the comfort of your home or if you if you're outside the company of your immediate family, the people that you're with most of the time, you should have a mask on. Any public place, you should wear a mask. Yes, I am preaching to the choir, but it's up to the choir to go tell the other choir members like this is important. We we have to we have to go back to what we did in March when we found out. My, but now here's the benefit of it all, though. In March, we had. I'm going to use the word fear, but just to prove this point, we don't move in fear. But in March, we had the fear of the unknown working against us. And yes, I'm glad that we we didn't err on the side of caution or we erred on the side of caution. Because we didn't know what could happen. All we saw was people close to us dying. People and people all over the country and all over the world dying. But as specifically in Detroit, if you're black 
you knew somebody that died. And so it hit our community so hard, we didn't know what to do. And if the governor said don't go nowhere, well, it just makes sense to us because we don't know if we touch something and somebody else touched it, if we were going to contract the virus, we didn't know. So uh, what I will say is we are a little bit smarter as it relates to what to do and what not to do to contract the virus. We know that we have to put the correct things in our body. I mean, God has given us wisdom since March on what to do. Thank you, Lord. And so a lot of it has to do with how we take care of ourselves. See, everything about this ain't all bad. Bad things have happened, but everything about it is not all bad. He has given somebody a vigor to take care of themselves now. This was a wake up call for somebody. This probably extended somebody's life for some years just because, thank you, Lord, just because of the wake up call. Yeah, this is a wake up call for somebody. And so now people are are taking vitamins and and eating correctly. And I mean, you 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 probably can't. Uh, some it might take you a little while to get where you want to be. But if you cut out a little sugar, you on your way. If you cut out a little bit of meat, you on your way. If, if you drink more water, you on your way. And this was probably a wake-up call that somebody needed. You probably were, were almost diabetic. Or you probably were almost pre-diabetic, because, but because something as crazy as the coronavirus came, now it's causing you to look at yourself and say, I need to cut this out. I need to do this. I have to be present. I have to be around for my children. I have to raise my children. And so it's appointed to man to die wants to die but listen god has given us the ability to sustain and we can make an agreement with god and say god don't take me now now your faith may not be there but mine is i'm not ready now i need to raise my children I need to leave an inheritance for my children's children. And I can't leave right now. What do I need to do to stay for right now, Lord? That might be too deep for somebody, but it's right for me. I It ain't time for me to go. No, sorry. I got too much to do. Still too much to see. Too much to say. Yeah. And I got to leave an inheritance for my children's children. My children young. So that means I'm going to be here for a long time. If I'm going to leave an inheritance for my children's children. Okay, but I'm supposed to be reading this article. America, Americans desire to gather as well as eased restrictions help explain the jump in new cases. See what I'm saying? Eased restrictions. And y'all was they was around here talking about Governor Whitmore. Shout out to Governor Whitmore. You did a good job. You did. I don't care what they said. You did a good job. You should be on the ticket with Joe. I'm not knocking Kamala. I'm just saying. If somebody said I said her name wrong, they said I said like the Trump supporters. They said her name is Kamala. <laughs> and I said when I say Kamala, I sound like Trump and them. Okay, I thought it was Kamala, but Kamala, Senator Harris. That's why I always say, a lot of times I say Senator Harris because I'm safe with saying that because can't nobody deny that. And you can't try to put words in my mouth. Okay, the coronavirus is spreading across the U.S. for a number of reasons, including family and social gatherings ranging from dinner parties to weddings, as well as eased shutdown restrictions nationwide. For months during the pandemic, Natasha Miller, chief chief executive of the San Francisco-based event company Entire Productions, has dealt with cancellations of in-person events and clients shifting to virtual gatherings. Recently, however, requests for in-person gatherings have increased. 
A Los Angeles client asked her company to plan a 30 person Halloween party complete with large scale lighting, models wearing body body paint and characters that walk around. Attendees will get rapid tests before entering. I don't know. I'm, I'm sorry. I don't want to be the person who has planned or participated in any kind of event. Sp I'm sorry. Super spreader event, she said. That's good. That's responsible. And I like the fact that, that everybody has to be tested as well before coming into the event. Not just temperatures taken. And let me tell you this about temperatures taken. Just because you take a temperature, um, that's not an indication on whether or not somebody has the coronavirus. Because you could very well have a high temperature and not have the coronavirus. Or you could have the coronavirus and not have a high temperature. I just wanted to put that in somebody's ear, too. OK, public health officials in the West said they are trying to balance not being too stringent with measures meant to mitigate the virus spread, while also stressing the importance of wearing masks, social distances, social distancing and getting a flu shot. Now, I don't know about that. Let the Lord lead you on that flu shot. OK, Carmanin Zagger, 22 years old went back to the gym in September after months of closures and is gradually returning to her pre-pandemic powerlifting strength regimen in the hopes of becoming a paid athlete. Earlier in the pandemic, she lived with her husband and mother-in-law as well as an 80-year-old relative, which meant the family was unable to have guests. Now the couple have moved into their own apartment which has given them more freedom to resume some of their normal activities as more businesses and restaurants are open. They joke that masks are like underwear. You can't leave home without it. Now, that may be a joke, but that needs to be every that needs to be in the forefront of your mind. I can't this is a necessary accessory at this time. Uh, it's, uh, accessory is too loose of a word. Um, but this is a necessary garment, for lack of a better word, th that I need at this particular time in history. We, You cannot leave home without a mask. It has to be as essential as your underwear. If you wear glasses, it has to be as essential as your glasses. If you wear a hearing aid, it has to be as essential as your hearing aid. It keeps you from... If you're asymptomatic, the mask keeps you from spreading coronavirus. OK, a recent tweet from the Colorado Health Department about rising case numbers, however, made her fear that gyms might be forced to shut down again. My hope is that the gyms don't close, but if it's because people are dying, you won't you don't want to be selfish, she said. The virus is spreading in places that have previously experienced surges as well as in less densely populated locations the COVID-19 hadn't reached. The U.S. reported 83,757 new cases Friday, a single day record. That's crazy. And the seven day average of new daily COVID-19 cases is now rising faster than the 14 day average in 42 states indicating the spread of the coronavirus. Mm, mm, mm. The trend has lasted for 45 days in Wyoming, 40 days in Idaho, and more than a month in Alaska, New Mexico, and Minnesota. That's all I'm going to read in that article, but it's a lot of information there. If you want to continue that article, it's very informational. It's in the Wall Street Journal. Folks, this is serious. It it's going to get worse. But I'm I I I'm trying to impress upon you that we have to take care of ourselves. We have to. Now, like I said, we have the benefit of knowledge now. We know what it takes to take care of ourselves. We know what it takes to to stay safe. Now, am I saying if you get the corona diabetes, you will you you will die? No, I'm not saying that. But but what am I saying? I'm saying a few things. One is take care of yourself in a way 
that if you get anything, it's going to roll right off you. See, a lot of times because we don't take care of ourselves properly, um, we don't necessarily die from an illness. We die because our body is not in a position to protect us from whatever it is that that attacked our body. See, inflammation and and there's no other way for me to say the word now. Mucus. If that bothers you, then I don't know. I don't know what to tell you. But inflammation and mucus, those are the things that any illness and sickness attaches itself to in our bodies. And once it does, that's how we get sick. And for lack of in, in layman's turn, and I'm a layman, so I can I, I it's no need for me to get any deeper than that. But if you if you want to fact check me, then Google it and see what the doctors have to say about it. But in layman's terms. When we have mucus and inflammation in our body. Whatever attacks us. It's going to be there, it's going to stick around because it has a place to live. But if we get those things out of our body. Anti if we if we if we put anti-inflammatories in our body, if we take if we put things in our body that 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 pushes mucus out of our bodies, then when those things come, they leave because they don't have they can't stay. It's nowhere for them to dwell in our bodies. So they have to move on. Sickness has to move on. Do you know, since I've been taking ginger, thank you, Jesus, since March, I've been taking ginger almost every day, almost. There hasn't been a week that passed since March that I haven't had ginger. So so that's to say that I may have missed a couple of days here and there for whatever reason. And and ginger is not the only anti-inflammatory there are other things, turmeric, ginger, a whole list of things. But the one that resonated for me in particular is ginger. But since I've been taking ginger, I haven't had a cold. Now, I've seen where I could have. I've seen where um, if I hadn't been doing those things, the ginger and the vitamins and, and the eating right, where... Uh, A couple of days how I was feeling could have went another way I've seen that It's amazing that God would allow you to see like now see now you see what's different here Now if you had done that you would probably be feeling like this And so i'm just saying y'all It works i'm not telling you what What I just what i'm reading what I think works i'm telling you what I know works Yeah, people talk about my eating habits and things of that nature i'm not I'm not having fun or I'm not, you know, whatever. But it may be a sacrifice to some people to change how you eat. But if it's a sacrifice worth living for, to me it is. Now, it's not necessarily a sacrifice for me to not eat meat, to not eat chicken, to not eat steak, to not eat fish and and crap well i did want some crab legs the other day but (laughs) it's it's not a sacrifice to me not to eat those things because i've been doing that for so long that's easy it's so it but it but for those who it might be a sacrifice for it might be a sacrifice i ain't gonna lie to you yes but how valuable is your life to you i'm telling y'all God has allowed me to be able to see the differences uh, in how I feel with what I eat. I'm going to give you an example. Like when I when I eat a vegan diet, no dairy, little little very very little to no sugar. Some things are just innate they just have sugar in them. But but like anything 
okay, so no butter, no dairy, uh, no unnatural sugar, I'll say. Uh, just water. I, I'm taking ginger, turmeric when I can or when it's available. Taking vitamins. I feel good. I feel light. My body doesn't require as much sleep under normal circumstances. And I'm saying that because I do a whole lot of different stuff. I do more than just a normal person. So you might catch me sleep at strange times. <laughs> That's because I ain't sleep when I was supposed to. But I, my body doesn't require as much sleep. But now I can eat some pasta that's got dairy in it. Not even meat. I'm just talking about just butter and cheese, whatever, and, and those heavy noodles. And feel weighted way down for at least half, half a day. Does it taste good? Absolutely it does. That's why I ate it. But I'm telling you, feel horrible. And so that wasn't really worth it, was it? So... I'm just saying, and that, and so imagine if you if you ate a whole lot of other stuff that I don't eat, how you would feel if you stopped. I don't know why I'm here, but since I'm here, man, I, I I'm not trying to impress you. I just want to impress up on you that somebody, I, and I'm probably speaking to somebody that needs to look at your diet, look at your diet, and see, because I believe it's healing in the ground. I'm. God put everything that we need. He put it here for us. When he put Adam in that garden, Adam had all of the answers in the garden to whatever came up. He It was all there. Don't we serve the same God? Isn't he the same God? He never changed. He never changes. So I think this message is for somebody Look at your diet. Yeah, man. It's worth it. And look, I still eat good. Listen, my wife made some vegan macaroni and cheese about a week ago. It was good. And guess what? I didn't feel weighted down. I didn't. And I ate healthy portions of it, too. And some, speaking of portions, some people need to... You might need to look at your portion sizes too. Look, we have to participate. We're asking God for for things, for good health and and sustainability, but we're not showing up. We got to show up. Remember last week when we talked about how faith without works is dead? In other words, faith is nothing if you ain't working. It can't be activated. And without faith, it's impossible to please God. But faith without works is dead. So you can't please God if you're not working. All right. That's that on that. I'm going to play this clip. I'm going to come back. I'm having a good time. I hope you are too. Do me a favor and tell somebody to join you this morning. I'll be back music they said his blood is thicker than water <laughs> yes sir okay remember before we went to the music i there was an article that i wanted to play here i'm sorry a clip i wanted to play here it is for real here it is A hospital in Everett, Washington announced a patient had tested positive for a deadly new strain of coronavirus. The cause of the yet-to-be-named disease 
January, a hospital in Everett, Washington announced a patient had tested positive for a deadly new strain of coronavirus, the cause of the yet-to-be-named disease, COVID-19. It was the first reported case in the United States. Concerning, but still a relatively small threat compared to the growing outbreak in China. But fast forward eight months, and the United States has the most recorded coronavirus cases in the world, with a death count that has reached 200,000. So how did it spread in the United States? Looking back, public health experts have pointed to a series of missteps and miscalculations in the U.S. response, a response that has been polarizing and painful, and launched the country into a deadly game of catch-up with a pandemic that has yet to subside. The first major action the United States takes against coronavirus is to restrict travelers coming from China. The first case in Everett, Washington, and a second case in Chicago, both were from travelers who had recently returned from the Chinese province at the heart of the outbreak. But the virus was also circulating in Europe around this time, a second front of infiltration that will go overlooked for several weeks. In early February, U.S. efforts center on how to safely screen and repatriate Americans returning from Asia, like those quarantined on the Diamond Princess cruise liner in Japan. This outbreak is the largest outside of mainland China and shows how rapidly the virus can spread if left unchecked. Public health experts say that a widespread deployment of testing in the U.S. is essential for containment, but test kits sent by the CDC to public health labs across the country prove to be faulty, and the labs are told they shouldn't use them. The FDA bars independent labs from using tests they've developed themselves, and health officials say the public should not wear masks. As the virus silently spreads across the country, experts warn of a testing bottleneck that can't keep up with demand, despite the president's reassurances. Anybody that wants a test can get a test. That's and what I would the just say line. that we start. As the CDC expands the criteria for who can be tested, infection hotspots appear across the country. One emerges in New Rochelle, New York. The National Guard is deployed to establish a one square mile quarantine zone within the New York City suburb. But by that point, patients and their family members had already traveled to several locations throughout the metro area, including a synagogue and a school. The nation's top infectious disease expert tells Congress the country's testing strategy isn't working. The system does not, is not really geared to what we need right now, what you are asking for. That is a failing. In mid-March, the coronavirus outbreak is declared a national emergency, as the country comes to grips with the fact that the lack of testing has made containment more difficult. Shortly after, six Bay Area counties enact the first stay-at-home orders in the country, closing all non-essential businesses. The entire state of California soon follows, preceding a cascade of 42 state closures over the next three weeks. After initially saying people shouldn't wear masks, the CDC reverses course in early April, recommending they be worn in public, guidance that is highly politicized as Americans become split on the severity of the outbreak. The perils of the virus are on full display at the outbreak's epicenter in New York City. ICUs are overwhelmed as officials try to rapidly increase hospital capacity to treat patients and confront the mounting number of deaths. I'm tired of walking into rooms and... Your patient's dead. Uh, you just walk into a room and there's a dead body there. I'm tired of calling families and telling them that you just... In less hard-hit areas, Americans protest stay-at-home orders, often without masks, to compel governors to reopen their economies. By the end of May, economic pressures have driven every state to ease lockdowns, despite health experts saying only three states meet reopening guidelines set by the Trump administration. These guidelines call for extensive testing and contact tracing, but states have a tough time implementing these measures for a few reasons. First, testing still isn't widely available. One analysis in late May concludes that 53% of U.S. counties don't have a testing site, and this lack of testing disproportionately impacts minority communities. Second, reopening states don't have the resources to trace infections. A recent analysis finds that Florida's Department of Health needs 33,000 contact tracers. The state currently has just over 2,300. 
Officials warn that bars, restaurants, and summer gatherings are ground zero for infections, as asymptomatic young people drive a surge in new cases. Protesters demonstrate against police violence and institutionalized racism, as the virus continues to disproportionately affect minority communities. And by the end of June, the epicenter of the outbreak shifts to the south and west, as cases spike in Florida, Texas, Arizona, and California, and forces some states to roll back or slow down reopenings. We are now having 40-plus thousand new cases a day. I would not be surprised if we go up to 100,000 a day if this does not turn around, and so I am very concerned. In early July, the surge in U.S. coronavirus cases and demand for testing strained the ability of pharmacies and labs to deliver timely results to consumers. By mid-July, 13 states see new infections rise by over 20 percent compared to the previous week, and Florida sets a new single-day record of over 15,000 new cases, as the country debates whether schools should reopen in the fall. I think it's important to realize that it's in the public health best interest of K-12 through students to get back in face-to-face learning. U.S. coronavirus cases jump by nearly 2 million over the course of the month, as the virus spreads to parts of the country that had been spared early in the pandemic. By the end of July, governors continue to wrestle with whether or not to reopen their economies, while more than half order residents in their states to wear masks. Any crowd in which you have people close together without masks is a risk. And I'll stick by that statement. In mid-August, schools in several states close in-person learning after students and staff test positive for the virus. By the end of August, natural disasters such as wildfires and hurricanes ravaged some parts of the country, hampering efforts in testing and state reopenings. September brings expanded testing capacity beyond the sickest patients. COVID-19 patients aged 18 to 29 now make up the largest group tracked by the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, though older patients or those with underlying health conditions are still most likely to die from the virus. In mid-September, U.S. officials are preparing states for the limited distribution of vaccines that could be available by the end of October, but some health officials predict the vaccine won't be available until later. You're asking me, when is it going to be generally available to the American public so we can begin to take advantage of vaccine to get back to our regular life? I think we're probably looking at third, late second quarter, third quarter, 2021. The coronavirus outbreak in the United States has proven difficult to manage. And so it's difficult to predict what will happen next. But public health experts say learning from the costly mistakes of the past six months may be crucial in plotting a path forward. Wake up right here. The Mike Brown Morning Show. Wake up, wake up, baby, won't you wake up? Hit it, hit it, hit it in the morning. Heard weekdays, 7 to 10 a.m. Eastern Time, right here on the Urban Uplift. You made a, a great choice today by deciding to rock with us this morning. We've had a great show today. I hope something was said to encourage your heart. I hope something was played to encourage your heart. Coming up this week on the Mike Brown Morning Show, don't forget on Wednesday, we'll be talking to Mr. Hawkins, our tax professional. He'll be able to answer any questions that you may have as it relates to taxes. I don't want you to think that taxes is just something that you talk about um, in that period between February and April. No. This is something that we need to make a part of our lives. So, I mean, this is something that we pay, so we need to understand them. So, here on the Mike Brown Morning Show, once again, we'll have Mr. Hawkins. That's going to be an every week thing. I guarantee you it's going to add to your financial arsenal. Yes, it will. Understanding that will add to your financial arsenal. And then don't forget, on Friday, we will be doing our second review on Rich Dad, Poor Dad. If you hadn't gotten the book already, you still have time because I actually I'm going slower than I thought I would. And um, eventually we're going to have panel discussions on what we read right now. It's just me. I I think it's okay right now, but we're going to add to 
to it. If you want to be a part of the conversation, you can hit me up on Instagram or Facebook. Um, but you can also hit me up at the Mike Brown Morning Show at gmail.com. Let me know you want to be a part of the panel discussion as we um, review what we read as far as Rich Dad, Poor Dad. So this week we're going to do chapter two. I I envisioned us doing more than one chapter at a time, but chapter one was so loaded that we even got to finish up the end of chapter one. So um, read chapter two. We're going to discuss it on Friday. And here here's what I need you all to do. We bring quality content here at the Urban Uplift every day. And here at the Mike Brown Morning Show, we like to think that we contribute to it. And we like to think that we start, we help to start your day off um, on the right path. We don't ask you for anything. As a matter of fact, the best ways that you can support us don't cost you a dime. And so here are the ways that you can support us. Um, if you're listening to me right now, chances are that you already downloaded the app, the urban uplift. So I want to say that I thank you for that. We just need your help telling other people, getting other people to download it. If you're listening to me right now and, and you are a person that sells cell phones or you own a cell phone store or you do any dealings in cell phones please download the app on every cell phone that you have before you sell it i felt that one (laughs) yeah but 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 really everybody that would help us out tremendously if you if you download the app and tell other people to download the app the second thing i'm asking is if you would listen to the urban uplift Listen to the Mike Brown Morning Show. Now, we're still building out the Urban Uplift. But as we build, there is always quality content here. Good information. I mean, you're going to learn how to build your credit and maintain good credit. You're going to learn about taxes. You're going to learn about real estate. All here on the Urban Uplift. And, um... Of course, you know what the Mike Brown Morning Show has to offer, but I want you to continue to listen and check us out. The next thing you can do to support us is you can go to the Mike Brown Morning Show right there on YouTube and subscribe to our channel. Subscribe to the Mike Brown Morning Show channel right there on YouTube. Anything that you may miss here on the show is going to be there on YouTube. Everything except for the music, because there are music streaming laws that are prohibited. Uh, Music is prohibited from being played or streamed on YouTube. So everything is there except for the music. So all the dialogue and monologue and conversation and media clips are there. So go there, subscribe, like. Go to our Instagram and follow us at the Mike Brown Morning Show on Facebook. It's just Mike Brown. Please like, share anything you see. Like, share it. I noticed that the algorithms are a little bit off. Uh, For example, if you are subscribed to the YouTube page, you may not get a notification until later in the day. But most often, most times, I'm sorry, um, the content is loaded within an hour after the show so that algorithm is a little off however too though i know i said that wrong (laughs) um on the other hand remember when we first started the youtube channel you would type in the mike brown morning show and you have to scroll 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 down well now i'm happy to report that if you type in the mike brown morning show we're going to pop up and you're going to see my face so that's a good thing i just need your help we need your help in building our subscriptions All right. We appreciate it. We don't take it lightly. Thank you so much. We started the show today with saying that sometimes you have to back up in order to move forward. I want you to take that with you throughout this day. What do I need to back away from in order for me to move forward? It sounds like an oxymoronic statement, but again, think about that car that's parked in a parking space 
and there's a car in front of it and a car behind it. The car can't just move. It has to back up before it can move forward. Not turn around. I'm not going to turn around and get back into what I was in, but I may have to back up and apologize to somebody or forgive somebody in order to move forward. Take that with you throughout the course of the day. And since I want to leave you with that, I want to leave you with this song. Have a wonderful, prosperous, super fantastic rest of your day. Speak to your day. Tell your day what it's going to be. I'll see you right here tomorrow on the radio. Wake up. Right here. The Mike Brown Morning Show. Wake up, wake up, wake up, baby, won't you wake up, hit it, hit it, hit it in the morning. Heard weekdays, 7 to 10 a.m. Eastern Time, right here on the Urban Uplift.